C. Double W's. And today we are looking at a classic Xbox 360. This is the original Xbox 360. If it wasn't the original, it was the second version. This was the Call of Duty version, Call of Duty 3 version. I think this was the original bundle, actually. I had the original launch day one. I actually went to the launch party for the original 360 and I had like a day one launch console, but that red ring a long time ago. But I've got this one recently from a buddy, Jimbo. Thank you, I really appreciate it. We're gonna try and bring it back because he had no luck with it. Red ringed a long, long time ago. And this is the original bundle, the Call of Duty 3 bundle Xbox, the original version. So we wanna get that going, but we're just gonna test it out. So we've got it plugged in with the power source and we're gonna test it out here. First, let's plug in the power source. And here we go. So immediately into red ring mode. There we go. Nasty, 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 dirty red ring. But that's it, I mean, basically useless. And I actually worked at EB Games at that time and the amount of red rings I came across from customers, it was ludicrous, guys. Like it was actually disgusting. I would say maybe, maybe seven or eight out of 10 came back red ringed of death. And that's why I got called the Red Ring of Death. It was an eventuality. I, like, we're gonna look back on it as an urban legend, but I'm telling you, it was real. Red Ring of Death. I mean, possibly programmed to die. And guys, I'm very suspicious of this era uh, being programmed to die because of uh, HD DVD. I actually heavily invested in HD DVD only because it failed and everything went on a fire sale. But I, I picked up well over 100 HD DVDs and I would say 75% of them have basically ended up with disc rot. And what that is, is it, you know, basically the information on the CD just kind of gets uh, eroded away and it becomes useless. So I got all these original HD DVDs and they're all useless, they're all garbage. So thank God Blu-ray won that war. I lived it firsthand, I was on the front lines. I'm gonna test it one more time. Yeah, definitely Red Ring of Death. So anyway, while we're here today, guys, um, we got the Red Ring of Death fix kit and we're gonna reapply thermal paste. We got all our tools and we got a brewski. So let's, let's do it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna unplug the power source. Just get that out of the way. That's only for testing. And then we're gonna take out the hard drive. I don't even, I haven't even been able to test if this works. I'm banking on it too. And then that's it. Now we gotta start taking it apart. Now you can just pop this up with your hand. These were actually supposed to be changed. And I think like, can you just pop it up? I could have swore you just take this off. Yeah, just like that. This actually was supposed to be changed. I think like Xbox was taking a page out of Nintendo's book with console customization and they actually did have quite a few and I actually collected them. I had like over 10 of these and I've recently sold them on eBay because I just didn't think I would ever own another one of these consoles. Now I have two, but I did save my Final Fantasy 13 one. And honestly, guys, I'm going to uh, switch it out for that. And then I think I'm actually going to customize this 360 and I'm going to like go for a Final Fantasy 13 theme because I did like I'm a huge, huge, huge Final Fantasy fan from the original Nintendo days. I do think like, you know, I love the original Final Fantasies where it was more like, you know, magic oriented and, and uh, medieval oriented. Now that it's gone a little futuristic, I'm a little put off by it. You know, I think Final Fantasy VII was the one that allowed it to kind of like perfected that. But everything after seven got a little wonky. But 13, I love the character design. I wanna bring it back. I wanna, I wanna really uh, do it up. Anyway, so we pop off the front plate. Then we gotta get this guy off. And these guys, I think have some sort of tabs here. We're gonna get into our fix-it kit. And we're gonna take out our poking device. 
And I think you gotta... Hmm. Okay, two are out over here already. Where else we got it? I don't, I really don't want to break any of these. I can't stand it with plastic tabs that... Okay, there, we got that one. We got that one. got that one yeah a lot of consoles like the plastic as the time goes by does not age well and they eventually easily snap when you get those consoles fresh that new console smell guys it rivals new car smell but over the years it really becomes brittle and for this generation it seems about the same use our pry tool here try and pry this guy out oh see i already cracked it i already got a micro crack guys ridiculous can you see that micro crack on the system ridiculous brittle shit it honestly feels like toys guys like all these consoles like as cool as they feel like and kind of new with their industrial design um, they all feel like toys looking back on it when you come back to it after all this time it just feels like a goddamn toy okay got it I'm gonna continue on here another one yeah this feels pretty brittle you gotta be oh I swear I heard something I think I broke one God damn it. Something slid down the middle. Okay, okay. Seems like there's a definite spot right in the middle here. Yep. Everything seems okay on here. I swear I heard something slide down though. So guys, now we gotta, I guess, um, de-shell it. And I was just noticing here, I'm a little nervous. Now, this doesn't look like the original warranty sticker, but I don't know. I never did find out if my buddy got into this. For some reason with the little dot there, I'm feeling like this has already been repaired. This is a refurb unit. I'm gonna check in with my buddy. I'm actually gonna send him a text right now. There we go. We're just gonna double check with Jimbo if this was put through a warranty because I think the chances of this actually working is slim if this has already been repaired once. They've got this other sticker that doesn't seem, I think the original sticker was up here and it was a silver metallic Microsoft, but we've got this uh, 360 one. Um, I don't know, I just, I see this little dot. I wouldn't have even questioned it, but I see this little dot here that it was probably added after the fact. And I can't even peel this off without just completely destroying it, so. Uh, it doesn't matter. This isn't going back to Xbox. We're not going to count on a warranty for this. But we got to pop off this front shell here. Um, just like so. You just got to get all these tabs. Alright, so we just got word back from Jimmy. Uh, one of them had three red rings of death, I think twice. So yeah, most likely it's been sent in. I can't remember, brother. I had a few at one point. My brother gave me one, it stopped working. I can't remember the sequence to be honest with you. But I do remember it had three red lights of death. I did send one in and I got one modified and I hope this helps. So this is the one I think he already sent in. That's why I'm feeling like this isn't the original warranty sticker. It could be, uh, we're not gonna get this one going. I, I hope the kit's gonna work. But because this has already been done once and it went again, Outlook does not look good. But we're gonna try anyway. Uh, that's what we're doing for you guys, for the video. So we're gonna get into the rest of our kit here. I think we need to open up this guy. So we've got a little uh, security torque. And then this is our Xbox 360 opening tool which is conveniently fastened into a piece of cardboard. So looking at the back, there's two notches here, and then there's five here. So we're gonna start here, 
and push this. Okay, I'm gonna free that. There we go. So we've got it cracked. And then we've got to push. something in okay we've already got this free there's another little clip there and then we just got to pop this which should go like that oh i already cracked another piece of the case god damn it see what i mean by brittle guys ridiculous look at this ridiculous we'll leave it in there possibly we can glue it but there we go so the shell is off so this lower case is somehow still connected. Um, I think we're going to have to pop off this eject button. And remembering your order here is so important. And I unfortunately already know that I'm not going to pay attention like I should. And so from here, guys, we're going to remove uh, six screws. We've got to go one, two, three, four, five, Six. Let's break that again. For whatever reason, these snapped right off. And that was probably from the torquing. Look at this crap. We're gonna glue that back. Oh, that bugs me. And here's another piece we lost somehow. Ridiculous. Making these damn consoles like toys. And the 360, uh, this was the follow-up to the original Xbox, right? The original Xbox was very much like a computer, I've been told. I've actually never opened one up. I never got into it. I know I will eventually, probably for you guys. But this is only their second console. And I also assume it's very much like a computer. Okay, so we gave it a little clean and we also grabbed some Gorilla Glue and we glued back those little notches for the screws to screw into. But now we are going to try and remove the optical drive and this tape is kind of holding it in place as well as a couple cables. So it just kind of lifts out here, but be careful. Make sure you get your cables, which are the SATA to the motherboard and then the power. And that should just pull away. We're gonna have to give that a little dust up too. That's looking nasty. Um, but otherwise, like the board is actually pretty clean. Like these uh, components do a good job of kind of keeping the dust, exhaling the dust out there. The next thing we're gonna have to do is get this shroud out of the way. So we're gonna pop down with our tool to free that shroud up. And I think that should just come out like so. Again, we're gonna have to do a little dust job on there. And then we have the fans, which kind of slip out here. We're gonna have to dust these guys too. Slip out, and then we gotta kind of pull them towards the motherboard and undo this power clip. Take that out. That's dusty as heck too. So we're going to clean those up and we're also going to do a little bit of a better clean through here. Looking at it right away, everything looks good though. I mean, all the capacitors, none of them are bulging. Um, I still think we might get away with the fix-it kit. We're going to reheat the board and hopefully basically reflow it with a, a heat gun. And then we're going to reapply uh, apply some new heat sinks and also some thermal paste. And they gave us some uh, trilinear ceramic thermal compound. 
but all in all it still looks uh like the motherboard looks like it's in good shape i have high hopes for it i don't really see anything that's like kind of burned out here i think we just need to give it a good clean yeah it looks like there's no uh like i was a little worried you know something might have happened something got spilled on it but it could just be a regular red ring of death and this will probably this i think uh is the second fix because that warranty sticker was not the original one so we'll see we'll see we've got the gpu and the cpu in here we're gonna give it a little clean and we'll be back okay phase one clean is done i did a quick clean uh we got most of it but we've got to take the motherboard right out here so um you gotta take off this actual red ring stupidness here that just comes off and the arrows mean up so let's put that aside and then we've got three screws we gotta take out here We're gonna leave those with that. Okay, take off this little front panel. There's actually a little connection on there too. Now, it seems like we have to remove the remaining torque screws. So we got four up there, two on the side, uh, three on the bottom, and eight in the middle. Now, because we're doing kind of a red ring fix upgrade kit, they want to switch these out. These don't look like these are going to fit though. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. We're going to have to get into that. Okay, and now all we have left are the heat sink screws. This is not fun turning this on the small end. <laughs> okay, that's all eight, and now this should just lift right out. For the most part, it does. Boom. So they have already replaced the heating pads on here and they look pretty good. Looking at the board, it's a little dusty. We're gonna give this another little bit of a clean just to get all the dust out of there. And all right, this is not gonna be easy. Uh, we gotta pry up these stupid pieces and we're gonna have to protect it with a piece of cardboard. Somehow, these gotta get pried off and I actually have no idea. Wow, those look incredibly tight on there. And you gotta somehow pry that off, are you kidding me? So we're gonna try this tool and I, online people are showing it, you sorta of go like that.
let's just go around one more time to just to make sure here okay so we got one off once uh you get three arms off the, the fourth comes off easy the gpu heat sink can lift right off and you could see here guys look at that so the thermal paste is like completely eroded away and like i think they just splooged it on and it just completely melted or evaporated into nothingness uh but the chip still looks good and everything still looks good here i don't think i damaged it taking off that stupid clamp i have to clean that and then we got our next one so i'm gonna set this down and just have to be really careful again this is definitely the worst part of the whole process besides snapping those clips that really sucked too just make sure you have a good grip on this give it a couple bends watch out for that it slips off the edge I'm just putting this piece of cardboard to have a bit of a better grip and just in case something flies backwards this is a lot of force I'm applying here guys using leverage like this is like multiplying the force and I definitely don't want to scratch this board and ruin any pathways oh Oh, that's making my heart jump. Okay. So. Now we're going to use this little screwdriver again and just try and fit it in between and twist it. To slowly kind of work it up. Twist it and off it comes. Twist, pry, pry, and then twist. And off it comes. Yeah, you still need to get one more off here. Wow. Got it. That is not fun. <laughs> but let's take a look at the processor. This should just lift off. Yeah. Completely evaporated. Just the bare copper touching on the, the processor. So we're going to go ahead and get those cleaned up and get ready to reapply thermal uh, paste and then our extra little heat sinks. And the pads, up. honestly, like, I don't know if I need to change these. These look pretty good. Like, I don't know if I want to change those. Yeah, we're going to clean this board up a little better now. Now that it's free. Definitely get in there with some alcohol, clean all this nastiness up. And we did a little clean. Uh, I think as best as we're going to get, or maybe I should say as, as most as we're willing to give. Uh, there's a little bit of fragments, like just tiny little dry fragments. I'm just going to scratch it off right here. But uh, we went over it. I went over it a dozen times, maybe more. Um, and we also cleaned up the heat sinks and that's the best we could get on there there's like i don't know what kind of compound they were using but this is actually like baked on there maybe the heat from the xbox was so intense it like baked a shadow onto the uh, heat sinks so like that was literally hours i spent probably an hour or two just like cleaning these things we got rid of all the extra dust in here oh and we also took off the heat pad starting from here we're going to use the, the metal base kind of uh, plate or cap or whatever to lay our board down. Uh, we're going to go on low heat setting with the heat gun. And we're just going to kind of go over it uh, for about a minute. So starting now. Watch your heat gun, make sure you don't touch the metal, it is really brutal. And then we're just going to flip it over, and now we're going to do it on a high set in for 4 minutes, right in this kind of central core area of the chips.
sure you don't touch that top of that heat gun. Make sure you also don't lay it on anything that could uh, light up. Everything looks good. It looks a lot drier, I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's radiating heat though, so hopefully it was long enough. It said four minutes. Um, that's what most people online are doing. And we're just gonna let it cool down back to room temperature. And then we're gonna get ready to reapply our heat pads and our thermal uh, ceramic, our ceramic thermal compound. So we're just gonna do a little dab here, a little dab there, reapply our heat sinks. Okay guys, and before we actually go ahead and reapply the thermal paste, we have to um, get ready for these screws. We're changing up our screw types, basically a nylon washer and a metal washer after it's through the board. But I guess in order to do that, we have to remove these, um, I guess, mounting posts. So, okay, so that's how they fit in so nice. They're gonna, we're gonna take out all these four uh, mounting posts. Those come out a lot easier than I was expecting. <laughs> also out of CPU heat sink, we're gonna take out these posts because we're changing up our mounting hardware. We're, we're basically getting rid of those stupid clamps, right? Now our heat sinks are ready to go. We're gonna apply the thermal paste here. So I like to just do a little dab. And then again. Okay, that's... Uh, I think a fair amount, that might be too much. So now we're gonna use this uh, spludger tool just to smooth it out a little bit as best we can to cover the surface. Might have put a little too much on this, but hopefully we'll just shift it over. So I'm just trying to cover it evenly. I'm gonna have a little extra. I'll leave in the middle there and hopefully that will spread out nice once we apply the heat sinks. And then same on this one, I'm just gonna Spread it across as best as I can. Cover the whole area. Same thing on the processor. As evenly as possible. Because this is really what's causing the red ring of death. This is, the stuff is burning away. Essentially, um, saying the console is overheating because it doesn't want to start up to damage these. This is one of the red ring problems. The red ring problems actually could be m numerous things, but this is kind of the main one. It refuses to turn on and play games or do anything really. So I have a bit extra here. I'm gonna scoop that up. Could use some more up top here. Coat it a little better, just like that. Okay, I think that's good enough. I'm just gonna wipe off the remaining stuff in the shadow where I know it's gonna go here. We've switched out uh, the mounting posts and now we put a nylon washer and then a metal washer. It's a bit of a balancing act. We're gonna have to try to hold all these. Okay, so like now that you're awkwardly holding it, all four, uh, we're gonna put this guy on, and I don't know how, I guess hopefully do this by hand. Okay, I got one, and now I'm just gonna flip the whole thing over, and hopefully these guys can just be tightened in here by hand. Yep. Hold in the heat sink. And then we can really crank it down. Feel it tighten, crank it tighten. So, I don't, maybe I should do it just a little more because like you do want to make sure the, the heat sink is, so I'm doing an extra tighten for good measure. Okay, so now we're going to put through the screws on the GPU side of things. Same thing, nylon, metal washer, hand tighten this guy, yep. Hand tighten this guy. Just a few threads. I think we got it. Hand tighten. Maybe we could just flip it now. Flip it. Yes. Hand tighten. Hand tighten. And then we go the rest of the way with the screwdriver. So crank, crank. Be really gentle, guys. I You could just slip off like that. And if you have too much force being applied, scratch your board, you're done. Just that simple. One slip. Just kind of have a little bit of extra grace and gentleness here. And this is way better to deal with than those stupid X clips. You just got to unscrew it next time. Hopefully there won't be a next time, but we all know there will be. Okay. So now we're locked down. Heat sinks 
and thermal compound reapplied, looking good, cleaned up. I'm gonna set that back down here. We're gonna put on our mini heat sinks. Mini heat sinks. And we're gonna reapply our thermal pads. Okay, next step, we're gonna peel this. Um, there's a really thin layer of adhesive we don't wanna fuck with. So I'm actually just gonna try my screwdriver here. Okay, I see it. You wanna make sure that blue, like you're making sure you're not pulling up, there's a white adhesive underneath. So you just wanna not mess that up. Get just that blue enough to peel, and there we go. So we're gonna put one, it seems, on this Xbox 360 named chip best we can. Press that. And the next one, same deal. Just watch you don't kind of damage that adhesive. Get just the blue. Peel it off and then we're going down here just like that. So we're gonna pop those guys on, press them a bit. And now we're ready for the thermal pads. So flip it over. And you know what guys, like these, these look pretty good. I'm just gonna reapply these ones. We're gonna throw these on the RAM chips. And I think this is literally just to kind of keep them from absorbing too much heat once that chassis heats up. And we're just gonna save that. I think those could be useful in another scenario. Uh, so we'll save that. Now we're gonna put everything back together. It's basically reverse the steps you just did. Okay, now we're just gonna reapply this back in to the chassis here. It's a tight fit. Yeah. It looks about right. All our screw holes line up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So the next step. We've got to put back on this uh, actual LED red ring plugs right in. And then there's three screws. Yeah, I guess there's uh, four LEDs here. Four little tiny LEDs. I really like the design of the 360. I, I think uh, when it came out, I wasn't thrilled. But in the end, like it was a solid little console. I liked how it was smaller. Um, in the PS3 and it, it did it did beat the PS3 on launch it came out first and then that just slips right on top yeah like it's a compact little design I really like and uh, I think the slim when the PS3 slim came out it really rivaled it, it came back but then they went ahead and they redid the Xbox and they kind of made that a little more sleek and that actually somehow had a bit of an X kind of shape to it I really like that. I think, I, I guess they were going for that in the original, but it didn't come across like an X. I never really looked at it as an X, but after the redesign, I definitely saw the X just with the subtle curve. And I, yeah, this, I mean, it, it does, it looks like a box right here, but the plastic ever so slightly kind of curves, I guess, outward, giving it that X look. But yeah, the final design of the 360, I thought was the best one. Okay, and now the fan is going back. Now we want the shroud. And the shroud just kind of fits in here. These X clips are basically garbage. I don't ever want to see these again. Next is the CD-ROM drive. And this is basically just going to fit in here. Make sure you connect it. Power and SATA. Just like that. Then reapply that little piece of tape to kind of hold it in there. So it's coming together, guys, literally. And the next step is re-encasing the shell. And we got these big screws. Now these are the pieces we glued back together. So hopefully it's gonna go really light on these. Nice and easy all the way around. Okay, now we got the eject. And the eject seems to go just in here like that. Yep, that's that click I remember. Now the outer candy shell. We already lost these pieces. Hopefully it's not gonna be too loose. I don't think it will be. Okay, click, click, click. It's all, it's all there. All right, now we're feeling stable. We got the hard drive on top. Oh, beautiful clicks. Beautiful, simple clicks, guys. And then this is, uh, gotta be pretty self-explanatory. It's the same on both sides, is it? No, this side is more 
curved it's got to go like that here we go once again and this is it guys the moment of truth the moment of truth we've plugged in power we have video we don't have sound right now but we're just running it to an old school view sonic moment of truth are you ready we have power No, we're still in rig red ring status. We're still in red ring status, guys. I'm not re ready to give up yet. So I've unplugged everything, including the wall plug. Um, it turns out that there's, reading a little bit about it, there's actually an error code that gives off the three lights just is kind of mean general hardware failure but we can get an error code kind of readout first I'm going to plug everything back and I also want to try maybe changing out the cord because right now I'm running the PC cord first of all we're going to try this reset so let's see how this is going to work so we have green on the power supply that means the power supply is good um, we still are getting a faulty, oh, but we did start up. Would you look at that? We actually started up there. Yeah, this, we weren't even getting this screen originally. We made it to at least the first one tenth of the splash screen. We don't even got the logo yet, but, um, I was told, or I was reading online that you should leave it on for a good 20, 30 minutes, uh, hopefully just let everything kind of settle, um, which I've done. I'm gonna try it again, and hopefully this fixes it. So, power off. I'm gonna unplug everything, including the wall plug. For whatever reason, unplugging the wall plug, the power supply, uh, it really seems to reset it because I notice it takes a little longer to hit those red rings once you restart it. So plug everything back in. These are the initial fixes too. If you first get the red ring, unplug everything, unplug the hard drive, try and start it up. So here we go. And you can see it does, oh, can you believe it? We got a lot further that time. And I'm not even red ringing, but I'm frozen. So, I don't know what to say, guys. I'm not even getting red ring now, but it's still frozen. It does seem to be out of the red ring issue, though. very strange so guys I don't know what to say uh, we're not able to get past the splash screen but yet we're further than we have ever been with the splash screen so for some reason it's freezing but we're not red ringing out I don't know I don't know what's going on we still have function of the CD drive I bet the best thing we can do we could test the error code we're gonna hold down the sync button and press the eject button but it's not giving us an error code because we don't have a red ring. We've almost got a logo, guys. We are damn close to getting a logo. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do I leave it on longer? Well, it's definitely better and we don't have a red ring. So at this point, I'm gonna have to come back to it another time because I got shit to do. Baby steps, can we take that as a victory? Okay guys, here's another trick. We are, we switch to the original HD component, we turn it on, and then we listen for it to start up. And then we flip it to standard. From there, we should be able to get in. Past the splash screen problem, like so. That's so definitely working. But as you can see, no more red ring and we have a game in there. We're gonna test it out. So it's definitely reading. 
Here we go. There we go. Back in business, boys. Street Fighter 4. And there we are. So as you can see, we threw the hard drive back on. Red ring of death handled. For how long, I don't know. But we brought back a box. Thanks for watching. See Double W's out.